Well, hello everyone. Here I am at the Busage Sphinx in Romania today for this very special Star Nation news. I am here to discover uh, an extraordinary place. I am here with Dr. Salah and Corinna Pataki, and we have been probing this place with our um, consciousness. We did a remote viewing, so you will know everything about it. But this is not the topic of today. Today we are having news from our brothers and sisters from other star systems in this galaxy. So what is happening at the moment regarding the negotiations with the AREC? The Galactic Federation of Worlds has still their diplomats there on that moon orbiting the main world of the AREC Empire. Together with them, as we know, there are diplomats from the Intergalactic Confederation and IA is there. He is still there because the negotiations are taking time. And I want to lead you through what is really happening and how it works, how it works. The High Council of the Federation hasn't yet given the full agreement, the full uh, yes for the agreement between the Anarch Empire and the Galactic Federation, the agreement of assistance, mutual assistance. The, the diplomats of the Federation who are on the moon are very positive. But we still need the answer. And it takes time. It takes really a lot of time to go through all the levels and really get the meeting, the decision coming down and the, the, the information being brought officially to the diplomats to the moon of the Arak world. IA has... In the meantime, visited the, the Arek government and spent time with his leader, a male Arek. First as courtesy visits, but as time passes, he started to take uh, advance, to go further in the, the negotiations. The Arek, of course, don't want to join the Federation or make any agreements with them. They are very independent. And Ia got to know the Arek mind. And the Arek are very close to the Anar. They are very good friends. They, I would do it and say friends, but they, they cooperate peacefully. And it would seem that the Arek are um, not impressed with the fact that the Federation is... Um, is is uh, wanting to do these agreements with uh, with them the the mindset why they refuse straight away now ia knows is why don't they trust us why don't they trust us it's a different way of thinking the federation want to wants to go forward in peace agreements wants to get everyone to be settled in non-invading agreements and that everyone is really bound by peace. But the Arek, not part of the Federation, think differently. They think autonomous. They, they don't understand the mindset of the Federation. They don't understand and they take it in a way. Are they scared of us? Are they, are not, are they not trusting us? It's a little bit like feeling insulted in a way. So Ia is there and he's easing everything down and he's spending a lot of time with the Arek and this, this delay is in fact very good, very good because it allows Ia to get the Arek in the right mindset to understand the Federation and not being um, feeling vexed, you know, or disrespected. So all of this is going on and... Um, it, it has repercussion in the whole galaxy. At the same time, uh, the Sikar Empire still exists, but is really diminishing in forces. The man system, um, uh, the operations in the man system have started. And there's a big fight there because it's a st big stronghold of the Sikar Empire. Uh, it's not an administrative or power stronghold. It is 
um, uh, industrial strongholds for resources, mining. Uh, it, it's that kind of place. So it wasn't really well guarded by, by the army because it was in the Sikar Empire. But now the, the remaining forces of the Sikars are going uh, to fight the forces the, of the United Galactic Alliance there. And uh, what I have to say, they, they face no chances. So that is uh, what's going on for the moment. Um, in this special edition, I would like to, to, to talk about what is going on on Earth, because we are at the crossroads of history just right now, at this time, when you are hearing and watching this edition of Star Nation News, the Earth politics, global politics, are going really in a, in a moment in time, in a singularity point, where we are going to access straight away this progressive future, or we are going to have a delay. The timelines as I was explained, are stabilized. And, but you know, I mean, when we talk about the result, the end result, the outcome, the outcome is stable. We are going to this, towards this, what we call Star Trek future, this future with free energy, with uh, highly advanced technology at service of human. But how we get there and when, is not stable, it's a, it's a va variable. We can go straight there or we can take time and be delayed and have to fight still for it. But at the end, we get there. So now there is a, in these days, a very important election in America that are deciding if we go straight or like this. There will not be a negative timeline. It's not happening. That's it. It's, it's stable. It's been set in the great cosmic web network. Whatever happens with these elections, normally it should go well in favor of this progressive journey of humanity. But if it was to be delayed because of trickeries, because of, you know, the deep states and the dark ones just playing their tricks, it's okay. We keep on fighting. It will motivate everyone to fight harder for our sovereignty. And at the end, at the end, we are there to this progressive, beautiful future. It has already started. It has already started, and I'm very happy to be talking about these, these things here, just here, in front of the entrance of the halls of records of the Busej. Under my feet, 20 meters down, is a facility that was built by the Anachim, or Anunnaki as you know them. It was not only a laboratory for genetic work, but it was also a, a place where, where was stored technology, ancient technology, mainly holographic technology. The frequency shield that is over this dome, we could feel it. Corinna and I, because we have this special DNA and so we, because we have been one of them, we could hear and feel the frequency shield and have these confirmations, as you will see. The ancient technologies are about to be accessible to you, to you. The only thing that is between you and these technologies is the deep state and their plans. But they are nearly gone. Even if we have to fight a last fight, it's okay. We are warriors. We are fighters. We've come here to this day in 2024 after 400,000 years of slave enslavement 
and we still stand sovereign and proud and confident in the future. Humanity is going forward and it is going forward beautifully with sovereignty, pride, hope and resilience. That's what humans are. Elena Danan for Star Nation News at the Boussage. See you next week. So here it is, it is the Boussage Sphinx, the famous, we are at the rear, left rear, for the moment. Here's the face, here's the profile. You can really see the chin and the lips. It's very impressive. Now that I am here, I can really attest and confirm this is not natural. This is sculpted by man. So we were told that the other side has been shot at by uh, soldiers during the last world war to destroy the face. So we have only one side of the face. Here it is. Once there is total silence, I can hear the frequency of the place, the frequency, a frequency sound that comes from really deep underground, it comes from really under. This is the sound of the frequency shields. I really feel them. I feel them. I hear them. I'm going to go to a place where I try to get some silence and I will hear it. You will hear it. Did you hear it? This is a magnificent Transylvanian sunrise. This is one of the two walls that we find in the vicinity of the Sphinx, built by the army. So it's concrete pieces 
okay and it is blocking an entrance but when you go over it there's a concrete slate and it has crumbled a bit here so here you go so this wall that has been built by the army to uh, to block one of the entrances to the Busage complex. So if you want to see the location, here's the Sphinx there in the distance that you can see. So that's where we are. And we are going to see another entrance now. This way. The other wall blocking the entrance. Another entrance. So there are pipes with electricity cable just here. Look at that, this big, thick, white pipe and electricity cables. And the Sphinx is already pipes with electricity and water. Why somebody needs to put these pipes when the water from the cliff comes to make sure that electricity right there? So we have cement here and we have footprint right there. So this is a handmade seal by some very bad people that we want to hide the secrets of humanity. Yes, they poured that that is concrete here. That is concrete. Concrete has been poured here right until this big wall up there. And it start as you were saying it is starting yes. here. Perhaps even even uh, lower. Further down. Yeah. You can really see the layers of the yes. concrete here. It really is concrete. Very easy to recognize. Very easy to recognize concrete. Yeah. Right? Imagine the amount they had to yeah. bring here to, to do this. Yeah, so Perhaps. that's the top of a tunnel that is going down, right? And the Sphinx is just right there where my finger is. That's where we are. Yeah, that's it. That's the edge of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the edge of it. That's the edge of it. And the other That's the edge of it. That's the slate of cement with concrete. And you can see here the limestone, limestone floor. There you go. The one of the entrance concreted by the army.
So we are going to check out these pipes. Uh, here is Razvan. Hi. Razvan, what do you have in your hand? So this is an uh, electromagnetic uh, field reader. And with this we can uh, measure uh, electric fields uh, generated by uh, wires that are connected and devices, antennas. Uh, if the electric current would be on the wire, we would get some measurements. If not, there is no electric current flux on the wire. But let's see. Okay, so the, we, we are seeing that the only exp there are two explanations for the presence of these wires here. Is that either it's feeding a radio relay and army uh, relay here up the mountain, or either if there's no electricity, this is connected to the underground facility that the military uh, blocked and uh, there would be if there's nobody in it there's no current so let's see so it seems like we get no reading which means there is no electric flux on these wires oh we get something It's, uh, every, time, every time I approach my phone, we have the spike. Perhaps. So that's my phone. Yes, that's my phone doing this. Yes. So, well, this is not linked to the, the radio relay. So it's linked probably to the facility that is just blocked by this wall, is the entrance. That may be the only explanation. Yeah. So, so uh, the military not there in the base there's no electricity and they would switch it the switch the electricity on when they would be in the underground base that's the only only explanation and it's really running through the through the ground as you could the mountain is here so it's quite deep and it's going all the way down we don't know where Star Nation News was brought to you by Elena Dana. Don't miss the latest news every Monday on Elena Danan's channel. Video directed by Stefzak.